Amen? Do not let your spiritual guard. You know what a guard is? David, how much time are you giving me? You know, I'm not in Africa. I'm tax what is this place called? Taxikido? Oh, Ataskesido. Great. You know, I'm not in Kakamega. You know, Kakamega can easily exceed time. So, uh, so for, me, for you to invite me back, help me to stay in my framework. Brother Austin used to say, <laughs> used to really emphasize on that. Amen? Amen. You know, thank God for Jesus. We are not just Christians. I pray that every one of us in this house are born again. You know Jesus. Now, it's, to be born again, it's not just a, a quote saying, but it's actually a relationship. Yeah. It's a, an inner, personal relationship experience. I can relate it to those of you who are married, or if you were married at one time, you knew how it was so in a relationship with your, you know, friend, and husband, wife, and, and uh, salvation is, is it's a close, intimate experience with our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ by the empowerment or enablement of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, without the Holy Spirit working it out, we cannot be saved. Jesus said, I have to go, that he may come, the Holy Ghost. So we, we are not just Christians. If you are born again, you have a superseding relationship beyond just coming to church. Amen? Yeah. And that relationship carries a lot. It carries a lot. For example, I can be in my bedroom and I can talk to my Father in heaven, a relationship, and He can hear me and He can answer me. That's, just, that's great, isn't it? You don't need to be in the church only, but that is not excusing you not to be out of church because the Bible says we should be in fellowship of brethren, isn't it? COVID has helped many to stay away. I don't know about here, but in our country. So, uh, relationship, the relationship we have encompasses or has a lot in itself. It has protection. It has provision. It has entirely what we would need while we are on this earth. But, you know, and, you know, the scripture, the word of God teaches us how to tap into all this. And uh, as long as we are in this body, the Bible, on the other hand, calls it tabernacle, this earthly suit, we are kind of limited, so we have to continually... Stay on top of the game in order for us to remain in touch. Amen? Amen? And so a God is one of those privileges that God has provided to us. We are protected. I said we are protected. But it's very easy for us to let that to go down on the other hand because there's so many things out there that we face challenges and you have to work and you have to do so many things and it can be very easy for us to forget to continue to put on our guard in order to maintain our protection so I'm here to advise you, do not let it down. Amen? Now in Matthew chapter 11, 
verse 30, for us to do this, it's not hard. But the enemy tries to make it look hard, difficult. Makes it look difficult. But Jesus said, my yoke is what? Easy. And my burden is what? Light. That is, in the normal circumstances, it is said, practice makes what? Perfect. If we exercise, if we do continually what the word requires us to do, it becomes what? Easy. It becomes what? Easy. The only challenge we face is we, when we do not practice. And this is what the enemy is good at. To distract, to resist, to hinder, for us to continue in practicing, in putting into action, so that the burden, what could be burdensome, what should be hard for us to do, becomes easy. So, I want to encourage you, put on enthusiasm, put on into, be excited about, about being a born again child of God, about reading of the word, and, and I'll come to that, you know, so being committed and, and stay focused and, and, and have self-drive for us to stay in what Jesus has said, he will make it what? Easy. Amen? Now, we, the season we are in now it requires that. The world is at a, a, almost a standstill, a tension. We left our country more than a month ago and uh, we just told there is a, th- a third wave of COVID. A third wave. I, I, was, I was listening to a projection of a video from India. I mean, there are no hospitals that can carry the number of people that have been affected. It's just pathetic. There are no ICUs in my country to, to take care of what is happening. But thank God that you and I are privileged. Amen? You and I are privileged in the sense that despite what is happening, we have a protective gear. Yes. And that is what we don't want to just assume. The question is, are we really utilizing? Are we really putting into practice and make this protective divine gear from heaven work for us? Because it's one thing talking about it, and it's another thing really living it and practicing it so that it can work for us and make it what we saw in Matthew 11 verse 30, that my yoke is what? that I can protect you, that I can go before you, that I can fight your battle, that I can answer your prayers. Amen? Amen. That I can heal you and deliver you from disease and sickness. Amen? Amen? So the season we are in demands that we make sure that are our strategy to be strong, our strategy to be protected, is not tempered with. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, the Bible tells us something. Ephesians 6, verse 10. The finally, my brethren, be what? Strong. Be what? Strong. In who? In who? No. I, I, I think, uh, you know, in the word we read two years ago. 
in the prayers we made two months ago with a group of sisters. And we had a, a, a good time together. Amen? No, strong in the Lord. And what? And in the power of his might. So, what we are looking at here is what will help us to be there. In Ephesians 6 and verse 10. What will help us to be there? Amen? So this season is not a season for us to fear. No. But you know, it's very easy to say, I don't have fear. But if I had a, a fear meter, if I had a fear meter, <laughs> is there something like that? Like that? Fear meter? <laughs> If there was a fear meter and I placed near you and let me see how much fear you, it's in you. <laughs> now there's not, nothing like that. But you see, we can measure ourselves based on the word of God. We can measure where we are in terms of fear based on the word of God. Now thank God you have a pastor who teaches the word. You have a church and leadership that believes in the word. Amen? I want to share with you about four things, five things actually, that will help us to walk into what I've just said. Number one, prayer. Everybody say prayer. prayer. Jesus talked about prayer. Jesus did not just talk about prayer only. He demonstrated prayer. Oh, Bishop, you know, they call me their Bishop, but don't worry about that. They call me Brother Paul here. You know, you know, I only pray when I'm in trouble. I only pray when I'm sick. I only take prayer serious when I'm, something is going on. Brethren, Jesus said, may, do we have men here? Can I see men? Just lift your hands. No, it's nothing I'm going to claim, but <laughs> Jesus said, men, men ought to always pray. Men ought to always pray. Amen. I can paraphrase it. I hope the young lady can help me get that. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What could you not watch with me? One hour? Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Pray. Church, I'm here to tell you, don't let the guard, the armor, the protective gear for prayer down. Amen. Amen? And don't take it for granted. I'm here to tell you, prayer works. Amen. I said prayer works. Amen. A heartfelt prayer a faith-based prayer. Where in Mark 11, verse 23. Can you give me that young lady? She's good, isn't, he? isn't she? For assuredly I say to you, whosoever shall say to what? Say to what? What do you say to the mountain? Be removed and be cast into what? The sea. And does not do what? Yeah. Doubt. Where? In his heart. That's where the meter is. You measure. See how you measure. You measure. But does what? Believes. But does what? Believes. That those things he or she says will do what? Be done. Be done. He will have whatsoever or whatever. He says. Amen. Amen. So, 
a heartfelt prayer, you and I have to convince ourselves. And that's why it does not hurt for us to get such a scripture and, and, and just confess it. I'll come to that later. Until it gets into where it's supposed to get. Until it helps you to become what you're supposed to become in terms of what this scripture says. Amen? So I'm here to tell you, church, prayer works. Everybody say prayer works. Jesus demonstrated it. Even on the last day before the crucifixion, he went to pray. I don't know. You know you're going to be crucified and you're going to pray. I can't, I can't believe, I can't, I can't understand that. I ought to be worrying about what is going to happen. How is Pontius Pilate going to talk about me? How is the high priest going to respond? If I were Jesus, I would be in a corner somewhere worried. But he took it to the Father. He did what? He took it to the Father. There are many testimonies about prayer. But time may not allow me here to share. But I'm here to tell you, brethren, my friends, church, prayer works. And I'm here to encourage you, church, as a person, pray. I say, does a person do what? Pray. And church, as a fellowship, or as a body, or a body of Christ, you know, in Kenya we say body. <laughs> Here we have, I have to twist my tongue and say, buddy. As a body of Christ, pray. Amen? Yeah. When COVID hit, the first three months, I was here in February 2020, left with my wife, went back to Kenya. And then we were, before just as we were ending February, the issue of COVID escalated everywhere. Shutdowns were announced. No going out, no traveling. And in Kenya, they in, in reinforce it. They make sure it is, you do it. They're not very kind. Sometimes. Thank God you, have, you, you live in, uh, in this country where you have freedom to express yourself. Sometimes in those, those third world countries and other countries, that freedom is not as much as you have. You, you don't take this freedom for granted. Amen? And so we, 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 we you know, we, I began to pray. My wife and I, we usually pray. We began to pray and the Lord began to speak to us, put together the, our family that is in Kenya, because I have some of my children here, family that is in Kenya, and pray. So we decided to have one day a week to come to, two days a week to come together. We did it for six months. And friends, it's a miracle to see the things that God has done. Apart from just being protected from COVID in our family, both here and in Kenya, our church was protected. No one died. Our churches, we have five churches, were protected. No one died. Our school was protected, which has almost 600 students and over 50, almost 60 workers. We have a drilling program. We, we drill water. Our crew was protected. Their family members were protected. We didn't bury anyone. We haven't buried anyone. We don't intend to go and bury. Right. Just one day or two days in a week, come together, spend a few hours, and pray. I said prayer works. I said prayer works. 
I have no time to tell you so many miracles we've seen. Amen? The number two thing that I want to encourage you for us to stay strong as Ephesians 6, 10 has told us and not to let our God down, our spiritual God, our sp- is our spiritual God. Everybody say fasting. Say fasting. Say fasting. Oh yeah, you pronounce it like Kenyans. So you can give a hand for yourself. <laughs> In Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, before he started his ministry, he demonstrated it. Jesus, we are disciples. Everybody say, I'm a disciple. A disciple is a learner. You learn after. We are disciples of Jesus Christ. Before he started his full-time Free year ministry, and then he goes heaven to heaven to be with the Father and sit at the right hand. He prayed and fasted. The Bible says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted four days and forty nights, afterward he was hungry. I'm going to do an in-depth study on this very scripture because I believe me and Tim Lahe is a teacher of the word. Tim Lahe, I, I, I consult with you later. I tend to believe Jesus was not led by the Spirit to be tempted to be tempted. But I'm subject to be corrected. I believe Jesus had the intention to go and pray and fast. But in the process, the devil knew this is how I can get him. And he came and tried to intercept. Especially, now if you want to know that he went to pray and fast, is he came, the devil came towards the end. Towards the end, he didn't come at the beginning because he knew that is the the time he thought, well, he's at his weakest, I can get him. Let me tell you, when, when the enemy knows this is, you are at your weakest point, that is when he wants to come in and break you. When he knows that you cannot even add a prayer for yourself, you're so sick in bed. And now you're beginning to think about well, I better just give in and, 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 and die. No. You know, I would rather be healed and die than die because I was sick. Yeah. <laughs> we can use the word of God to be healed and then go home. It's not, it's not an evil thing to die. But we have to die at the right time. We have to die whole. Yeah. Well, that's subject for discussion. Okay, I don't want to confuse you. Praise be to God. Amen. So, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted and fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Next, verse 3. And now when the tempter came to him. He said, You are the son of who? God. Command that these stones become what? Bread. A lot of suggestions the enemy will bring into your mind when you are at your weakest point. And that's the time we need to pray. Amen? And that's when fasting becomes handy. Now, uh, I'm not here to push you, to judge you. But I'm here to tell you this discipline, it's a discipline, it's a spiritual discipline. It's an, a spiritual thing that we need to do that will enhance 
our spiritual strength, our spiritual protection, our spiritual sensitivity to the things of the Holy Ghost. There are many times the Holy Spirit speaks. Even when we, even here, He's speaking. Amen? But unless we have a tuned spiritual ear, it can be hard to hear Him. And that's why you can be in a group of people, the Spirit of the Lord is moving, and someone picks up what God is saying. But others may not, or someone else may not. I pray that that does not happen to you, my brother, my sister. Because we have a father who wants to communicate to us. Fasting will help us to develop spiritual sensitivity. I won't dwell much on that. There are different kinds of fastings. And I'm not bringing legalism on this subject or on this display. But I pray that the Lord gives you wisdom. Those of you who may be on medication or different kinds of uh, challenges and that your doctor can guide you. Amen? It can be spiritual, but also it can be beneficial physically. Amen? I give you a testimony. In that period of one day of prayer, we, two days of prayer, we decided we'll have one day of prayer and fasting. One day of prayer and fasting. And it was not a big deal. Just miss breakfast, miss lunch, and eat all you want in the evening. Amen? And we just went and, and, and for six, six months, six months, I'm not here to tell you how we fast or what we do. It's not a show, but it's to encourage you. One day of missing just those two meals and eat in the evening. For six months, we saw miracles. Miracles. We are thanking God for those miracles. One of the miracles was the school, where we built the school, we bought a property. For 20 years, we could not use that property because the former owner's family came and intercepted. 20 years. They could not allow us, not even. They rented, they were collecting rent, money, and the school could not, we could not do anything to help subsides, uh, you know, to help to add income to the school, to help to run the school. Because this is a, a private Christian school and it, it needs supplementation, su supple financial supplement. Now, 20 years, it was released during this, towards the end of our prayer and fasting. And I, I cannot tell you many other miracles. Many, we, we, we see an overflow, even now. We see an overflow of the things that the Lord has done. Brethren, I don't know what you could be struggling with. Could be family, could be personal, could be sickness. Daniel, in exile, fasted. Amen? And the angel spoke to him. And the angel led him. Number three. For us to have our God strong and working for us. Number three. Spend time in the word. Everybody say word. word. Yeah, I, I think I, I can get that accent. <laughs> Otherwise, in Kenya, we say word. Yeah. Amen. Spend time in the word. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 3. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 3. And they stood up in their place and read what? And read what? 
from the book of the law of the Lord. That is Old Testament. That is in the Old Testament, it was book of the law. Amen? Book of the law, the prophets, major and minor prophets. And they are, the, the Lord, their God, for one fourth of the day. How many hours were that, church? How many? One fourth of the day, how many hours were that? Wow. Just reading the word. Just reading the word. I want to encourage you. If you have your reading portion, get a particular scripture that you can emphasize, put emphasis on, and try to just go over it and, 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 and read it and speak it to yourself and, until it becomes a reality in your spirit. We call it Rema, Rema, Revelation. You get it in your inner man, in your spirit person. Amen? Amen. Number four. Confession of the word. Confession of the word. It's one thing to read the word. Because it's very easy to read. And it's very easy to forget. Yes. Many of us read. But please let us not forget. You cannot memorize the whole scripture, the whole Bible, or many scriptures, but at least you can get one or two. So if you zero in, say, every week I'm going to memorize two or so scriptures, major on, until I get it in my spirit, in my inner man. You know? And then I can be able, when I'm driving, I can say it. I can confess it. I can declare it. Are you here? Yeah. I thought I lost you. No. <laughs> Confession of the word. Say exactly what the word says. I had an accident one time. And thank God for confession of the word. Because I had the word in me. A big truck came and hit my pickup truck. I thought it's, I, 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 I saw it drive to uh, this side and I, I wonder what's happening? What, what is driving this truck to go that side? I didn't know that the devil was preparing it to come and hit me. Hit me. You know, roads are not as well paved like your roads here. When I come with my wife, and we just love to drive and enjoy, especially in the countryside. Yes. <laughs> Some of you need to do that. You, you have a, you, you're blessed, but <laughs> enjoy your country. Amen? Drive these good roads. Man, David knows. Amen? Driving from Nairobi to Kisumu to Kakamega. Man, that's... Those are 80 hours, a journey that could take four hours, twice as much. So, hit us. Immediately had the bang. Remember what came out of my mouth? Was not, oh, we are going to die. We will. No, it, in the name of Jesus, we shall not die. You know what that is? Psalms 119, I believe, 117. We shall not die, if, if I've not quoted it right, you can help me. We shall not die, but live to proclaim the word of who? Lord. Of God. Psalm 119, is that right? 117, verse 117. Help me, young lady, if you can get it. It came out of my mouth quickly. Because what? I had been reading and I had been confessing the word. And you know, the word of God, the Bible says, is sharper than a two-edged sword. Yes, 119, 17. Not, not, not 117. Because scripture is, you know, uh-uh. 118. 118? 118? Yes. Thank you. I shall not. Let's read it to everybody. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. 
Ah, here, here. Do we have people here? Can we read all together? Amen. Now, this was 2011. 2011. David, what God has done today from 2011, it's amazing. The devil wanted to cut it short. I'm here to tell somebody, do not let the devil cut short your life. You have a lot to do for the kingdom of God. You have a lot to do within your family. Sickness, the Lord can heal. The time for death can be postponed. We have a choice. We have a God. We have a Lord. We have a healer. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. When those words came out of my mouth, The truck we were in, we were four people, went into the ditch. And this big old truck was coming to land on us. But when I spoke those words, it fell, turned in the center of the road. We went there. We came out of that truck without a scratch. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord has power. Amen. I said the word of the Lord has power. And that's why it's not just reading. It's we read, we confess until we get it or memorize it. It will come from the head to the heart. From the head to the heart. Say amen, everybody. Amen. Number four, five. Worship. Everybody say worship. You know, you cannot help. When we do these things, you cannot help but the Spirit of God Himself will begin to just flow from within us. And our worship will begin to emanate, rise up from our hearts. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Worship. This will enable us to worship him. And that's why Jesus said in truth and in spirit. It's a source from which worship is coming from. It's not just, you know, you're not imitating anybody. It's coming from the heart. Aided by the Holy Spirit. Enabled by the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit enables you, it means there is an anointing. I said it means there is an anointing. Amen. The presence of God is there. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I said thank you, Jesus. I'm here to tell you, do not... Let your spiritual guard down. Father, we thank you for your word. Bless your people. Help us in this season, in this hour, to remain ready in this combat. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you so much. Thank you, David.